Okay. Um, I was uh, born here in Marion County. Okay. And I'm fifth generation of seven. Wow. Uh, three generations definitely grew up on the Ocklawaha River. Wow. And uh, my grandfather actually settled in here after the Civil War. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah we just heard a little bit about yeah, that. He was a, a Army trained doctor. Okay. So when he got out of the Army, he decided to keep practicing as a physician. And uh, he settled on a place that was named after Paramore Prairie, Prairie which was um, close to what they call now Scramble Town. Oh. As in the revenueers after everybody. Scrambling, because moonshine used oh, to be. Okay. Everybody had, you know, in Ocala? Of no, this would be on the Ocalaha. Oh, okay. Uh, out, still in Marion County, mm -hmm. but not in the Ocala outside of this okay. town. Okay. Definitely rural. So, okay. So, Eureka, Fort McCoy area. Oh. And then. Uh, so I grew up in Eureka on mm -hmm. the Ocklawaha River. Cool. Um, my mom probably taught me to love the river the most because she grew up on it and she and her father would go out fishing and well, at night they went fishing and hunting and different things all, you know, daytime or nighttime. Mm -hmm. So um, she would take me from the time I was in diapers out and show me the Ocklawaha. Uh, and in front of our house we had a gorgeous Creek, Spring Fed Creek. It was called Log Landing. They had made a uh, little cut in from the river to come through the swamp to bring oh, logs okay. out. And they also came right into an Indian mound. So, oh. much to my devastation as a child, they went right through that uh, Indian mound because uh, my parents took me for walks when I was a little child to either put me to sleep or get me to be quiet. So, we always had to be tiptoeing quietly and no talking because we did not want to disturb the Indians and run off everything. So we did quiet walks in the woods. Uh -huh. were, you were not allowed to scream and carry on. Wow. And, you know, so we had to go quietly and my mom would point out things. And, uh, so it was very fun and educational. And, uh, but I also did not like the barge canal from the okay. very beginning. Okay. I hated it as a little child. Hmm. So um, by the time I was 12, they had devastated what I looked forward to being my playground. Hmm. So they came right through and made a mud hole out of it, you know, sand yeah. and mud. And so, um, but uh, my first um, getting out on the water, because I walked the banks, I didn't have a boat, so I had to walk through the swamps. Oh. I had an older sister that liked to do that with me, so we'd all head out and walk. Mm -hmm. um, so my first boat was a canoe. But by then, the, the canal was in between us, and all I had was hyacinths. Oh. So I had a hard canoeing experience, mm -hmm. but when they first finished the canal from my house, it was flowing open water before the hyacinths took over. So mm -hmm. I would sit on my horse and fish off my horse's back, or we could <laughs> swim there, and you know, it was a recreational area. And uh, because of all the destruction there, we were always picking up artifacts, Indian artifacts, through that area, because they went right through the mound. Cool. Um, then later on I got uh, educated in a job that took me in behind four walls. Oh, so yeah. eventually uh, <laughs> we came up with a business to get back out on the water. Okay. And you're too busy. We did yard work so you're too tired to go lift a canoe <laughs> on Sunday and go like I don't want to move you know. <laughs> and no one was there to offer even a boat rental or a place we could go just other than the bank to fish, so we decided to start our own business. Okay. So we, we came up pontoon boat business, not canoes. And, uh, oh. So it got me back out on the river. Yeah. And then that's I became great. quite interested in taking environmental groups okay. and things out, mostly Silver River, Aquaha. So, All right. So I have um, a lot of good memories as a child of the river, not too much other than the swamp walking. Okay. And then wow. when I did get a boat. I think it's fun. Yeah, 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 yeah that was great. <laughs> oh, it, was, it was fabulous. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so um, those are some of my fondest memories, is being able okay. to share and hear some of the stories of uh, my parents. Uh, my grandmother was still alive when I was young. Oh, okay. Uh, fishing on the river and scenes and things that would happen. The one thing that I um, regret is the fish are gone in the river. They're blocked off. We had a lot of migrating species that would come up the Akawaha River, and they would tell me um, that the catfish, the channel cats and the white cats, I guess the white cats especially, would come up to spawn on the rocks in the shallow sections of the Akawaha River. Mm -hmm. And they would come in to where 
this is a sand bottom river, and it's usually can be very, very clear because most of it is a solar river. And they would blacken the river. Wow. Coming up shoulder to shoulder, hundreds of catfish wow. to spawn in those uh, areas that are up and down the Ocklawaha River. Very mm. popular fish for gigging. They used, my granddad used to gig the catfish. My grandmother would drive the boat. Tell us what that is. Gigging. Oh, gigging. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I think gig means a sharp forward thrust. Oh, okay. So the gig is a stick with oh, prongs okay. on it. Yeah. And it barbs on the prongs and you stab it into fish. Popular frogs mm -hmm. is a way of uh, getting, the, especially frogs and fish. Okay. So you would dig them and, some, and mullet also. You can dig the mullet, the saltwater species. You can dig freshwater. You can dig a bass. <laughs> you can dig uh, some, uh, you know, the brim and the different fish like that. But you okay. there's certain ones you can legally dig. Okay. Yeah. And I still have my grandfather's gig. Uh, <laughs> it's wow. very weathered and, you know, like Well sold. used. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but those are some of the stories I like to uh, hear. Yeah. Now you can see the catfish, but you got to go below the uh, dam on okay. the St. John's Riverside. Okay. Uh, but, uh, anyway, uh, I do remember the uh, Indians at Silver Springs. Okay. Uh, prior, you know, all the way up to Silver River. And I do remember the fish that used to be up there, the big schools of mullet and catfish that used to be in there. Hmm. And I do remember as a um, young child going to the boat ramps in Eureka and watching the fishermen come in with the big striped bass that would make their annual run up Silver River to spawn. And, uh, so, and I mean, they were like 35 pound striped bass and ice chest wow. just huge fish wow. out, you know. And uh, so that's when I realized there was more than the large amount bass in that river, so mm -hmm. they don't spawn in there anymore. They need the whole river to be able to spawn, and they are not, so they're all hatchery raised. So we lost the Okawaha River, which was the only spawning ground for stripers. Um, so let's see, some of the other, I used to love to swim the Okawaha River. Okay. And when I didn't have a boat, I would try to talk people into taking me up river with my inner tube and, <laughs> and let me float back because that was my best way of getting uh, further fun. around the bend, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, now I'm a little, uh, I'm not as invincible. I may not consider doing that. <laughs> Long-term drifting down the river. And, uh, mm -hmm. Let's see, yesterday we were below the dam and I think we saw about 30 alligators within a mile. So wow. I doubt anybody oh would my want to God. Swim, uh, swim in there now. They're, yeah. they seem to be, and most of them were the big alligators, pretty good size, anywhere from eight, nine feet. And I think we had a few that were pushing uh, 10 and 12. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, a big. Yeah, it, was, it was quite interesting. Okay. So, um, cool. Uh, you have any questions? On, uh, I, yeah, I don't think we recorded your name. Oh, we can I'm start like we back there. I forgot to ask. I'm sorry. I'm Erica Ritter, R I T T E R. Okay. And my family was the Paramours that grew up okay. there. Uh, okay. One side was Paramours, the other side the was McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I also uh, Lester Tootin. Okay. Have you ever interviewed him? He's uh, not related yet. to my family. Okay. A couple, just a second cousin or something. Sorry, let's <laughs> family. Uh -huh, somewhere. Okay. Yeah, so, um, uh, and how did you like stay involved with the Oklahoma? Like, um, like in your job and your career? Um, well, it was my love to fish. Mm -hmm. Not too many women. You know, going wanting to fish and wanting to fish from the time I was little. Matter of fact, my first fishing, I thought my first and last fishing trip, I took my cane pole and swung around and knocked my mom into the uh, creek at Log Landing, and uh, it was a deep hole, and she was afraid of those alligators we just discussed. So um, I thought that was the end of it, but she was very kind. <laughs> she recuperated, and I went back to fishing. Um, so in order for me to fish, you know, I realized you know I needed to get a boat now I could the river was gone in front of my house I had to uh, go to a ramp and get my canoe in and then when um, uh, we started a business the first one was with my ex-husband uh, it was Captain Thomas Custom Charters and he researched it we found out how to go about getting our captain's license and how to operate uh, within the Coast Guard rules mm -hmm. an uninspected vessel and an inspected vessel and uh, now I have my own uh, business, a cruising down the river. Once again, that 
gives me the excuse and the over, you know, the money to have my own boat. Mm -hmm. And plus, uh, I love to tell people about the river and share my river and and yeah. Uh, yeah. my ideas of how you know the the river should be protected, restored. Mm -hmm. Boat boats, how they should conduct themselves yeah. <laughs> on a narrow channel. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's. Um, that was uh, better than what my actual career is as a dental assistant. <laughs> okay. So, which I like working with people. That's fine, but I wanted to stay on the river, be outdoorsy. Yeah. Things yeah. that I grew up as a child. You know, you tend to like what you did as a child. So. Yeah. You know, on your vacation, yeah. you could do that. So, and people find it funny when. Um, after doing river tours and stuff for a vacation, I, I get on my boat and go back out on the river. <laughs> I also have um, expanded. Some people think it's a, not expansion. I've gone into small kayaks so I can go back up in the creeks. That's cool. And I'm really loving getting back up in the creeks where you climb logs and you get back there and there's nobody mm -hmm. else back there. So that's a lot of fun. Yeah. And photography, I've really enjoyed having a lot of uh, pictures of the rivers and things I've encountered. So you have to come by and see my slideshow. Yeah, so I'm like trying to have my computer there showing some of my best pictures. Okay, so, yeah. cool. All right, you mentioned just like one more question. Sure. Um, earlier when you were talking uh, about telling people about your ideas about what should be done with the river and like to help preserve it and that sort of thing. All right. So could you tell us some of that? Sure, I, I found that just about Anywhere that man wanted to improve the waterway, it was for his own uses, boating, and mostly high-speed boating. They wanted not to go out to enjoy an area, but to see how they could change it to make it suit their needs, transportation purposes, or high-speed uh, type desires that a lot of people have, even noise. They like to be noisy and fast out there. So my idea is to enforce the speed limit on a narrow channel that the Coast Guard pushes for, but that's a fair steerage way. Protects your channel, keeps people safe, and saves the food chain along the shoreline and keeps that intact. Lakes are horrible, horrible damaging uh, impacts to that. Um, I also would like the river to be as natural as possible, remove the dam so we have our fish back. I mean, it, that's a source of food not just for people, but the whole food chain is tied into those migrating species. We've lost a lot of, on my section of the river, above that dam, we've lost the eagles, the ospreys, we well, of course lost the whole huge trees that these birds would be nesting in also. Um, so I would like to see the, the fishing uh, restored to the Ocklawama River and I, hopefully in this process they're going to learn that a small tiny handful of fishermen that want to keep that Rodman pool have no idea of what the river is like. Yeah. And, um, so, and they don't have the knowledge that what it could be. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, you know, if I had the dream of the biggest bass being the 17 pounds, the largest fish ever caught out of Rodman, it's not the biggest fish. And St. John's and other rivers and lakes have produced larger fish. But if they knew they could catch a 35 pound striper and restore the breeding grounds and we didn't have to raise them in hatchery, you had natural wild fish in a healthy mm -hmm. system. Uh, you know, that, that's what I would like to see occur okay. and to get those catfish coming back in because Silver Springs is a great attraction with fish. Yeah. Without fish, they're scrambling to keep people's attention. Hmm. You know, they're putting in touristy Disney World kind of things yeah. where people are still coming to there and going, I remember as a child all the fish, where are they? Hmm. So you know, there's a lot of people who are aware of the changes. Yeah, I think important. a simple, simple thing could get them back in the river, the fish is what we need. Okay. The birds that follow them on all of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, it's and the fishermen mm -hmm. you know, would come out off the St. John's for, and go up the Aqua to catch stripers. <laughs> so yeah. it'd be a good industry return. Yeah, Lots for sure. Lots more fishing there. Yeah. yeah, okay. Those are my questions. Okay.